this matchup as in the blue, it's Dream. And his opponent in the upper left and the red for Kite to Gaming. Innovation. Oh, wow, I got that right this time. That's, that, <laughs> that feels really nice. <laughs> Yeah, well, she she didn't have to one up me like that. I was going chill. <laughs> then you, you came in. Uh, I feel a little bit underwhelming now. Uh, but with that being said, uh, yeah, this is Romantic Side is an interesting TVT map because again, there's so many avenues to play around um, to attack the third base, to attack the natural. As soon as any TVT game on this map gets to four bases, it is wild because you will have two, sometimes even three. You know armies or multi-pronged attacks moving out at the same time for both players across this map because again there's so many avenues there's so many paths and because it's so wide it really makes it a lot harder if you're the defensive player to constantly be in position for everything yeah absolutely there now that's where we get the games that we really love right everything's all over the map it's chaos players are tr uh, showing how truly fast they are how good their multitasking is how good their game sense is uh, really, every part of their ability is being uh, is being tested, being measured. But you know what, uh, Firebirds, we get on into this. I got a question. How in the world are all of the good game gaming players so incredibly big-brained, right? <laughs> we saw <laughs> Science Head was cut off. We saw Patience Head almost cut off. And Dream Head, he is, uh, I mean, that that is uh, very cut off. So I'm wondering whether he has something planned here. Is there any correlation between, you know, webcam positioning and actual builds? No, but mm. I can choose to believe there is. I mean, we saw those builds that Patience went for. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, well, Patience did have his cam positioned correctly, mind you. It was just like, just the top of his head you couldn't see. Meanwhile, the other two players here uh, are firmly at the top of the forehead, um, which I think is, you know, decent cam position. You know, if you're going to have it uh, a little bit lower, I think that's where you want it to be. Because you're not missing out on too much, but, you know, you, you're keeping a little bit of a secret. You're keeping them, you know, you're keeping people waiting. You know, they want to know what's there. Um, just, but... just how tall is their head? <laughs> yeah. right? Is Could there like go? the cortex of like a machine that's just filtering into the brain and giving them information on how to play the best? Or is it just some hair? Or do they wear really tall hats? These are questions mm -hmm. that we'll never get the answer to. But uh, you know what? We should probably talk about this game. Maybe just a tiny bit. <laughs> As uh, we do have again some build variation here, innovation or build variation. Innovation did go for the double gas, and uh, Gr Dream, of course, going for a Reaper expand does mean that he will have his base about half a build time faster. And uh, well, his starport is going to be just a little bit slower, so that's what we're looking at. Once again, this is really a rehash of the first two games, and uh, you know, that's I, I kind of feel favor Dream if this is a rehash of the first two games. Dream again, we talked about this. Outside of taking a fight he shouldn't have uh, when Innovation did get the Siege up, it, does, it did feel like Dream in both games did look just a little bit better. Now, whether that, that's going to matter here in this ace match, who knows? But uh, certainly, playing this style and this stylistic mismatch, or the stylistic difference, as you say, it's not necessarily a mismatch. Um, a Dream has looked a little bit better. Hmm. One thing to note here, though, is that this is a different build for Innovation. It's not the uh, the four Marines and a tank. It's going to be four Hellions and a Medivac that are moving out. Ooh. So, of course, you can bring this into the main base if you want. If the natural is open, you can also send it there, as it looks like Dream gets the... Oh! Doesn't I mean, get the think, better end of the Reaper fight. I think Innovation got high ground, or put himself up high ground in the last second so he could take that last shot. Really cool battle, a little micro battle there. And now we do have the Hellion drop coming on in. Dream has not scouted this, by the way. Does, where is his army? Does he have anything? It's all at the natural right now. They're not expecting the Hellions as coming in, trying to see how many kills they can get. A good split off the bat, but four workers going down, five now. And the splits are good, so, you know, Innovation can't target too many at a time. The Raven's going to get here, but seven workers killed. Absolutely worth eight on top. And you know what? Innovation. He had a slower third, or he had a slower natural base, but he has absolutely made up for that. Gets so many kills, and now he's gonna dive straight into the natural, and there's nothing here either. But besides that, the Marines are enough to dissuade him. But right back up into the main, he's just trying to move Dream out of position. Well, he did get a mule, which is gonna be rather nice for him. But again, so okay, I know in uh, PVT, for example, if you get uh, or TVP, I should say, if you get eight probe, that's kind of like the magic number, right? You get more than that, you're very happy. You get less than that, you're very sad. I don't see enough Reaper, uh, I don't see enough Hellion attacks in TVT or these Hellion drops to really have a good uh, good estimate. Is there kind of like a magic number 
that were like in like okay innovation got nine workers he's really far ahead but if he got six it'd be just about even because of, of the commitment things like that um it all depends on the bills that you're looking at and right now um with the start the innovation went forward with that opening build order um eight is a good amount it's not going to put him incredibly far in the lead he'll have the worker advantage and as you see he's using that to get an earlier third base um but it doesn't just straight out win in the game now had it been a situation where both players had gone for the double gas they were on a similar uh timing with their ccs and innovation just managed to get eight workers then it's a completely different look then for innovation that is you know you, if you play it out well you can snowball that into um a massive lead uh man don't give me these nuanced answer don't give me these new answers wow nuanced yeah new these nuanced, nuanced answers uh yeah uh firebird yeah I, I just want the you know give me a number that i can use in like all of my broadcasts you know he got eight so he's he's dead but looks like the hellions are gonna find their way on in once again and this is turning to snowball a little bit for uh, observers give me the, me, me, uh, the uh, natural there we go okay six more workers do go down i think it's a grand total of like 16 at this point yeah that is uh you you asked for a magic number if you get 10 workers that's that's enough that you will you can win the game off of 10 worker kills uh before the five or before the six minute mark and yeah you can now see dream he's down 10 workers at this point he doesn't have a third base on the way and innovation has already finished his this is i mean he's gonna have a faster stim dream needs to win with this push like it, there's no question he does have a minor supply lead a minor army supply lead that he's going to look to leverage here. That being said, though, I mean, his Ravens are damaged. The Ravens of Innovation are not. And Innovation, he does... I think he's only on two Vikings right now, but he's adding a couple more. And uh, it's all going to be down to the stim, right? If Dream can get a good stim on top of things, he's maybe going to be oh. happy. But that is four tanks. So there is enough Raven energy here to actually break these four tanks. That's kind of uh, what we're looking at. So it will only be one tank that you can kind of stim on top of. And kill, but innovation is actually going to unseize right now because he understands that Dream is moving in on the right hand side. Now Dream does have to take the long way around. He cannot go. Oh, you know what the you know what the uh, absolutely masterful play would be, right? You uh, you drop a mule on some of the mineral patches, and you actually are able to break that through. But now uh, for the moment here, innovation will siege on up, and he does have the Viking lead. So these Vikings here for Dream are just not useful whatsoever. Dream though, he is rallying a lot of army across the map. He is really truly all in here finding himself a fairly significant army supply lead it was it was like three earlier now it's 10 it was 12 for a second but innovation of course he does have one one on the way he does have combat shields on the way eventually innovation is going to be in a fantastic position he's going to have a massive upgrade lead i mean yeah look we're going to have the ebay's done here for dream just around the time that plus one that one one is done for innovation and if there's one rule of tbt we've been talking about you know truisms and rules of tbt all day one one bio shreds zero zero bio right or even a single upgrade lead because of how fast these units attack and when it's mm. two well that's even worse yeah i mean the one saving grace here for dream is that he managed to keep innovation in his own base for this long because he's been out on, on the map and that's meant that he's been able to get up his own third um he's Ooh. been able to start getting workers on at that and he's been able to try and catch up in this worker count it's been slow and he's still about 10 behind but it's it's a start for dream to, to get back into this game and that that supply count has uh dipped back and we now just see this tank sieging on sieging trying to see if they can get any free picks here but as it is innovation still going to be heading that upgrade uh in those upgrades i mean you have the one one for dream it's not even halfway done and the two two has started for you know yeah, that's going to be a bit of a problem, but you know what? Hey, if you have enough tanks, it doesn't really matter here. So, oh, Dream actually is going to be able to take a rather nice fight here, although he will lose one Raven. Uh, three, Actually, three Vikings are going to be disabled, so that's a bit of a problem. That being said, though, we, yeah, okay, with the Armor Shredders, he's not really going to be able to take the fight that he wants to get. And it did look like we saw we saw that one disable, right, on the north, on the closest tank there to, to Dream's tank line. And, well, that wasn't all that great, right? Oh, look at that innovation actually going to use the mule to allow his army through so he can go for a full flank. I was talking about this as a, something that Dream might possibly do, but of course, you know, you kind of filter through. It doesn't really work all that well. But it's working out well for innovation, absolutely. It's, he's going to be able to get some counterattack damage on it. And again, it's 1-1 versus 0-0. This bio running home is not going to be nearly enough to deal with this. Do we have any tanks at home, though? That is the big question. Yeah, I mean, Dream... Just very smart there, moving back his army. He scouts that out. He does have one tank here, which should be able to do a decent job of dissuading those Marines from moving forward. And actually, you have Liberators coming across the map. Dream recognizing the fact that he has an air advantage. 
is saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to try and use this to just to, to absolutely win, to take that air advantage and to turn it into a position where I can just constantly push forward by using these liberators. And I mean, if, if you want to get back into a game, this is the way to do it. But oh my God, this flank from Inno. And then the flank on the flank from Inno. Who's <laughs> <It was> flanking who? <laughs> it's flankception as Inno is actually, he's moving out. He's leaving three tanks behind. But he is moving out his army here. And he's going to try and attack. No, he's going for a big. He's going for a big surround here. He's going to try to break this army oh. of uh, of Dream here with one fell swoop. I think is what's happening. Notice he's really not moving. Across. Oh, actually, never mind. He's going to move across the map. But now the Liberators are going to siege on up here, try to break this tank. One tank's going to go down. Two tanks are no. One tank's going to go down. And yes, this is a terrifying chokehold here for uh, Dream here on the outside, but Innovation, he's now going to move on in. SCVs oh. are going to have to be pulled to deal with this, but it's 2-2 two -two versus 1-1. One -one. There's not enough buffer. These tanks are going to go down, and now we are well and truly into a base trade scenario. Both both Terrans are going to find their way out into their opponent's natural rather quickly, but of course, it's a bio base trade for Innovation, a tank base trade there for Dream. So, I mean, oh, oh, oh no, Dream, no got to be careful. Oh, he's going to be fine. Okay. Oh. Again, bio base trade there for uh, for Dream <laughs> Mar oh, Marine base trade for Innovation, but Innovation just has too much. Gets the surround, clears up the tanks, has everything back in Dream's home. GG is called. Innovation will close it out.